guys, George Linsky here from Toe the Line, joined today by Darren Hendry. Jokey boy! How you doing buddy? Yeah, it's right. Um, I guess we should start at the very beginning. How did you get into combat sports? Um, well, my old man was a boxer, and so he had me and my brother like, boxing before like we could walk, just you know, messing about in the front room with gloves. But I actually went out of um, amateur boxing gym when I was about seven or eight, but um, sort of, you know, as kids, you'd go, you'd go for a couple of weeks and stop and stuff like that. And I, I think I had my first bout when I was about 12 and I had a couple of juniors. Then fell out, of, you know, same sort of thing. Did a bit of kickboxing, boxing, you know, uh, a little bit of MMA, you know. Yeah, sit down, sit down, sit down, sit down, what there? That's it, that's it, what there? That's it. Um, yeah, bit of unlicensed, jack of all trades, master of none, you know. Exactly. But amateur boxing, that's, that's my, my thing, really, you know. So you moved then from, you know, mixed martial arts, a bit of kickboxing, a bit yeah, of boxing, yeah, yeah. towards bare knuckle. How did that transition exactly happen? Because it's just fucking naughty, you know. I just like the bare knuckle stuff. It's just, where I grew up, like, see around here, it's a lot of travellers, right? And it's a lot of, you know, and like most of my friends are and all that. It's, you know, it's like this, this gang shit that you get all up in, like, the city and stuff, like people shooting and stabbing each other. People are just taking their shirt off and, and that have it, you know mm. what I mean? That's, that's how we've all been brought up. So I've been bare knuckle fighting all my life, really. You know, and then it's obviously become legal and mainstream. And I thought, that's a bit of me, that is. <laughs> I love that. Have a Christian old punch up without getting put in prison, you know? And it's, um, yeah, here's a bit of me. I like it. So you started off, you fought Michael Ord second. I think it was Ben Paul first. That's right, yeah. And then you moved on from into BKB. How did you sort of get the call to BKB and sort of talk me through that process? Well, so I had them two, you know, with that, um, that Ben Paul, mate, he, you know, sort of, you know Sparked him quite easy, and the same one that Michael Orr, I think it was one shot, bang, he, mm. did, he, he went down, switched off. And then um, the, the, the BKB geezer, Jim or Joe, one of them, they, they uh, messaged me and said, Do you fancy coming on board? I was like, Yeah, you know, it was a big step up, but you know, looking for the opportunity, and yeah, that went from there. And it was BKB 18, you know, you were set to fight Dan McGrath and unfortunately that Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sort of taught me through the emotions of finding out you weren't going to be fighting and, and what... Sort well, of I didn't find out until the fucking, the, the, um, the day before, did I? Yeah. He broke his hand the day before a fight or something, I don't know, you know, you know it was a genuine injury, but it's... Who breaks the fucking hand the night before? You wrap yourself in cotton wool the night of a fight, the, mm. the week of what well, I do anyway, you know, I wouldn't be fucking it in every bag the night before a fight, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. And you, you had a few opponents, I believe, coming in and out that were supposed to be replacing Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, fair play to um, Jim and Joe, the promoters. They got me um, some other keys. We said, yeah, we'll have him. Some ex-world champion kickboxer and fucking ex-pro um, journeyman. We said, yeah, we'll have him. Um, yeah, because she... And then, and then he pulled out and all. Mm. He, he, he was like, oh, sorry, I took it on too short notice. And I've talked it over my family. We like, well, what's the fucking point in agreeing to it? And in the end... You know, and, and Jim and Joe, they were trying, they were, and, but I was just getting, you know, getting any name chucked at me. What about this geezer? What about this geezer? You know, half of them didn't even know what they were, you know, not that it bothers me, but mm. they didn't know who they were, fuck, you know. They could have had like 50 million fights, or they could have had none, you know. And in the end, it just done me fucking nothing, and I was just like, do you know what, bollocks to a lot of you, bang, I'll go and watch a show, and I'm going to have a cut of beers, and, you know, eat some proper food. You know, you spend, you know, three, three months, whatever, training, you know, not living like a living, living like a nun. I, really, I don't even fuck with birds because they just do me fucking brain. In. That's how switched on I am when I'm when I'm when I'm training. You know, yeah, yeah. I can't even be bothered with birds. They can go fuck themselves. You know, like um, and, and it was just fuck this. I'm going to have a kebab or something. You know, because I wanted some proper food and a couple of beers. And I went up and enjoyed the show. Obviously, I'm much more over a thought, but it is what it is, isn't it? And now. Here we are, you know, coming up to the 16th of November, Ashley Gibson next. Back on that Spartan lifestyle, isn't exactly. I? Exactly. What's, what's your thoughts on Ashley as an opponent? Do you know what? I actually like him, you know, because he don't give a fuck, does he? He's <laughs> like, he, he end up no one's fucking arsehole, like, end up no one's fucking ring like some of the other people in um, combat sports are, you know, brown nosing people. He just don't give a fuck, and I mm. like him for that. You know, he, um, he's a tough, durable fellow. That's what I wanted. Like, people would say, your mental taking on someone, you know, I think he's had 100, 200 fights or something like that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, yeah, one of them all, don't get me wrong, but, you know, that's any, any man that's had that amount of fights knows his way around the ring, doesn't he? So, mm. but oh, I've got someone now that he'll turn up with one leg missing. He mm. don't, you know, so he, he won't break his hand the, the night before a fight, you know, so 
Um, yeah, nah, fair fucks. And he's got a naughty right hand. Oh, I've got to kick my hands up with him because he's got a naughty right I think I've got better boxing ability than him. You know, obviously I'll come from a, you know, an amateur, there's no disrespect to him, but I think I've got better boxing ability. He's got a naughty right hand. But yeah, I'm looking forward to it, you know. I'm going to sit and cut him off, mug him off, sorry. Excuse my language, that was a bit naughty. Um, but yeah, I'll shake his hand after. And yeah, no, no, I ain't going to sit here go calling him a, a mug or nothing, you know. No, it is. So. And here we are, you know, the Camberley Boxing Club, a fantastic facility for one. Um, yeah, yeah. What's training been leading up to this one? Uh, one I wanted to discuss with you that I've, you know, discussed off camera with a lot of fighters is, you know, training without the bare knuckle. How much do you use sort of bare knuckle training in your, in your supplemental? It's training? obviously, it's, it's, I'm not really a scrappy fighter. I do love a fight. I, I, I do like, you know, I take my shirt and have a fight with anyone, but I, I can box as well, mm. right? But it, I think with bare, it's, it's more picking your shots. You can't just go in... You know, because obviously you can't, you, your, hand, your hands are fuck up. There's so many little bones in your hands. Your hands will fuck up before your head fucks up. Mm. It? You know, your hands will get messed up before your head gets messed up. It's more just about picking the shots. I train just as I would for a glove belt. Mm. There's, there's little things I do at home, but that's my little secret, you know. But um, yeah, I know, get, you know, I'll get up, do me run at you know, six o'clock, do me, me runs, train two, two, three times a day, something like that. And I'll, I'll join him. We've got a lot of pro glove boxers down here. You know, it's, it's a good stable down here. And um, I'm normally moving around with them. We've got Sammy Orsford. He's a light heavy. Got to move around with him. Um, Charlie's got a couple of boys. You know, top level amateurs, pros. You know, and I'm just mixing it up with anyone. And my, my trainer Matty got. He's, he's he, he really he breaks things down. You know, I've been at this. You know, I've, I've been um I've been at um other gyms before, and they just you know just let you crack on. He don't. He'll he'll, he'll He'll, he'll break every, this is why you should be doing this and that's why no you're doing that wrong and he, he, he won't he, he won't hesitate to, to call you a prick if you if you, if you you know you're not doing that right that's shit and mm. I'll, I'll rather that than someone go yeah well that's brilliant Darren that's brilliant you know I'd rather someone say well you ain't doing that right you know 100% so obviously you're quite a heavy bloke 97 kilograms I think you said you walk around that yeah this yeah this one's at 88 kilograms how yeah. hard is the weight coming in for the last fight that's the worst part of yeah. it because I'm a, you know I'm, I'm a man I love me food you know I'm not really a party animal. I'm not really a drinker or nothing like that but I, um, I do love me food and it is hard you know and it's just it's, but it is you know a couple of months living like that to live the rest of your days as a champion you know it's just you know it's, it is what it is that's it and um just before we finish, um, any sponsors, anyone you'd like to thank at all? Yeah, there is actually, um, but I fucking forgot them all. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? The fucking C CM Clothing, yep. a fine tattoo shop in North Camp, mm -hmm. WD Construction, um, Tiffany's uh, Gentleman Lap Dancing Club, that's my that favourite one, <laughs> and um, uh, Stratford's Barbershops. But whilst, whilst I'm here, like, these are the guys that have helped me out for this camp, but I've also got to give a shout out to the to the lads from the last one because they helped me out big time. Even though the fight didn't go through, and that was um, ideal fencing or oh, I always forget their fucking name. So Craig Ward, anyway, Craig Ward's fencing company, um, Hamilton's Pie and Mash. Fuck me, there was loads of them. I can't fucking remember. Guys, if I forget ya, I apologise, but I am grateful. You know what I mean? My, my, I'm shot. I've got too many punches in the head, you know? And what, what we'll do is we'll get those guys, we'll get them in the description box, so we'll get a full, full list in for you. Thank you, Georgie. So perfect, but thank you, Dan. You've been You're love, he's lovely. He can come over and fuck my sister anytime <laughs> he wants. He's a good boy. Cheers, buddy. No worries. Where are you?